Und Lord of the Song. tells us how we should not fall into the traps of age worldly dharmas and this was demonstrated throughout not just Miller but his own life but all the lineage holders quintessence of these quintessential, quintessential um, sort of message from these um, songs that advises us why we should not be attached to the eight worldly dharmas and generally all the samsaric endeavor, you can see clearly that this samsaric endeavor, the samsaric aim is fundamentally not fixable. This is something we get from the songs again and again and again. that the samsaric endeavor, the samsaric activities, only deceive ourselves and makes us feel that there is an end, but it never has an end. And in many songs, you can feel that not the the, frustra the frustrating and uh, painful part of the samsara is not because not only because it's futile but probably much worse than its futility is that it's endless there's never a point where you arrive and say, okay, I have done my deed. And this is actually quite a big expression when Shakyamuni Buddha finally vanquished the Mara under the Bodhi tree. There are few declarations he made, and one of them is Java Cheso Kur Boro. Java Cheso means I have done my deed. Kurporo means I have shrugged off my luggage or a kur, sort of baggage. I have shrugged off. I've, I've given, I have, you know, offload myself from the baggage. I don't have to mention this we find in all the songs here and there. So if the samsaric endeavor is futile and endless and therefore not something that we should really put our you know, whole concentration, energy and time, then what is it that we should be aiming? And this is, um, you know, the songs of Milarepa. And I'm trying, basically, I'm trying to tie it 
kind of together, all of it, because they're, they're all connected, of course. Is in the, in the words of the forefather, Gaji forefather, what we have to do is, what we should do and what we should really aim for is to the images, these images, senses in its images, like you are fighting, you are in the war. And what you need to do is you need to go into a fort or a castle where you don't always have to look right and left and especially behind because people, you know, enemies will attack you from the behind where you will be safe and sound and secure. And what is that? This you find mentioned in many, many songs, like the songs that is sang to a ghost, but also in the colophon, Back to the colophon. Tonsal G, Charger Chamber Long, Russell Lamji Charger Cherdone, Dessel Debbie Charger Chamber, comes from Gender Pinjan, Rogerji. In the space of ground Mahamud of luminous emptiness, traveling on the path of, path of Mahamud of luminous inside, in the fruition Mahamud of luminous bliss, may all the beings of the three realms be liberated. Now, I can only blabber a few academical and intellectual stuff. The real Mahamudra, experience of the Mahamudra, has to come through the two indispensable cause or the condition, which is devotion from you, us, and the blessing of the Guru. And the blessing of the Guru does not necessarily have to come, you know, through internet or you understand through you know some sort of physical situation it can come any time any form I told you last night that the whole gaju business the whole this you know tabu gaju business Even a shoe played a very important role. It can come. I'm jumping here and there. As in when Milarepa was, and this is a very famous song. I'm sure many of you have read. As in Milarepa when he was picking up um, kindling wood, dry wood, and the, suddenly the wind comes, and, and he was trying to grab hold of the wood. Uh, then it, uh, uh, the wind blows away his uh, uh, robe, you know, and then suddenly he think, well, you know, after all this time, uh, I'm, that he, uh, I'm still, attached to the wood and the you know, robe. Uh, and then somehow that triggered him looking towards the Lotolung, the southern part of uh, Tibet. And there he saw this orangey uh, sort of uh, cloud. And uh, he sang this famous song, and you know how he wishes and long to be there with the Marpa, how he longs to be celebrating the mandala of Jagrasambara, Vajrayogini, so on and so forth. So even from this 
event we can gather that where there is a devotion, where there is that secret outlook, anything can be, can trigger you and lead you to the experience of the Mahamudra. In the case, I mean, like Milarepas, you know, that small event, the wind has triggered the firewood, the clothes, and then the orange cloud, suddenly remembering the Guru, and then leading towards incredible, uh, you know, teachings of the Mahamudra. So it can come in any, many different forms. If you can, if, if you have the guts and the wit to receive it, the sign and poking of the Mahamudra experience can, can, can come in many different ways. But of course, Guru, as Sakya Pandita said, Guru is indispensable. And there's many reasons, not just fundamentally, Guru in the Vajrayana is not to be limited to a master who teaches you. But Guru is the path. Guru is the universe. And actually, ultimately, Guru and the practitioner are inseparable. This is the whole point of the Guru Yoga. But academically, intellectually, If we talk about these stanzas, Tongsal Ji Chaja Chambilong, the Mahamudra, the hallmark, the seal. the real character, characteristic of everything. Cha, ja, ja. Tibetan word ja is something to do with the ceiling, the hallmark. Again, I repeat, experience of this Mahamudra will not come by making the Mahamudra Mm, I don't know, how should I put this? Um, I'm trying to stick with the Mahamudra language. Make experiencing, experience of Mahamudra will not arise when you make this Mahamudra into something special. 
This is why the Kagupas, especially Kagupas, they chose the word Tamal Jishepa, ordinary mind, as ordinary as possible. Keeping it as ordinary is very tough job. Really tough. Because we are just itching. We always want to sort of poke, rearrange, and, you know, clean, mopping, vacuuming. Metaphorically, I'm talking about, you know, in the, you know, trying to understand, you know, Mahamudra, vacuuming, dusting. Or decorating on the, the from the other side is the decorating, moving the furniture. That habit is just so strong because we are cause lover. You see, we love steps. We love progresses. So keeping it ordinary is going to be difficult. Very, very difficult. But nevertheless, the ground of Mahamudra of luminous emptiness. This, according to the forefather of the Kagyu you don't, you don't have to, uh, you, you don't have to make it. There is a no way to make it. Not just, you know, because you, you know, like even in the Mahayana Sutras, Dilla Sajja Chiam, Shabar Chama and Kyungzim, Yanda Nila Yanda Tai, Yanda Tona number 12. No need to beautify, no need to make anything. You cannot cultivate. There is a no path. There is a, you don't. Uh, you don't make it better. This ground luminosity, this ground luminous emptiness, I should stick with Tumbrambuche's word, this ground luminous emptiness, you could be, you know, going round and round and round in the samsara as butterfly as dogs, as Canadian, as <laughs> bugs, as, I don't know, as ghost, as men, as women, as um, staunch uh, atheist, as uh, staunch uh, fundamentalist. Doesn't matter what you have gone through, that ground luminous just doesn't change. It stays. It, you know, the, the dream I was talking about, you have dreamt bad dream, you woke up from it, but all along, you have never moved one inch from that comfortable bed. And this ground luminosity, that is also emptiness, is always there, all the time, even as we speak. And this, and, but, but the ground luminosity and emptiness, you know, this is a very important word, luminous emptiness, in the space of the ground Mahamudra of luminous emptiness. So this luminous emptiness, that is our innate, okay, let's say for the sake of communication, we, we, Let's, let's call it our innate nature. It's always there, but when we look at it, when we approach, we constantly end up 
making mistakes. And the reason why we make mistakes is at times we only see the luminous aspect of it. And by seeing only the luminous aspect, we get carried away and become eternalist. And this is where you, be, you sort of reborn in places like California. <laughs> and you understand, you believe in things like etern basically eternalist. You know what I'm talking about, eternalist. You become a being who overly believes in things that, that are believable. That's what you become. And that's how we forget our ground luminous emptiness again. At times, when we look at this ground luminous emptiness, the emptiness aspect is more vivid, so to speak. So we get carried away by emptiness aspect. You understand, we only see, it's a bit like, you know, there's a Sufi story about how six people blind people touching the elephant, and they all each thought a different shape. That's how when we look at ourselves, major division is like, we get carried away by luminous and we become eternalists, and we, we see the emptiness sometimes, and some people, and you know, it depends, you know, maybe morning, Luminous get more attracted, more attractive. And towards the evening, emptiness, you can, and then you get depressed. You become nihilist. So you can reborn in places like France, I think. <laughs> oh, no, I actually, I. Uh, what is it? Quebec? No. Montreal. Montreal, right? Then, you know, the whole world, whatever you experience, you, even your attitude is like... <laughs> you, it's almost like you are not a human being if you are not in a bad mood. You have to, like, be a little bit bad mood as a fashion. <laughs> and I mentioned the fashion, it's very important. Even our fashion, you can see eternalist, uh, too carried away by luminous fashion, and too carried away by emptiness fashion, and food also, to everything but the moment we think, so it got, we got carried away, carried away by luminosity aspect or the emptiness aspect. When the ground of Mahamuddha so in the process of getting carried away by the luminosity and the emptiness, we forget this completely ordinary Tamal, Tamal Jisheba, Tamal, completely ordinary, innocent, ordinary, naked, not special at all. This is the amazing thing about the Gajub you know, forefathers. They hate special things. <laughs> Anything that is special, they really don't like. They might even ask, is it special? Oh, okay. You know. <laughs> Anything that is not special, they love it. Non-special, Tamil, totally ordinary. The ground, you know, the ground, space of ground of Mahamudra. And as, you know, so the, so the ground of Mahamudra, we get carried away. And as soon as we get carried away, a thought you know, like thought happens. Oh, coffee.
ja Java plant. That's really good. <laughs> and then they have a very good coffee machine for sale. There's a special one that you, you know, air, suppress, uh, air press or something. And that has a very good review from different users around the world. <laughs> See? Java thought has already produced this much samsara, all the way up to the review. <laughs> so this is how we get entangled, because we don't remain in the state of ground luminosity, that ordinariness. But I'm just telling you these things completely on an intellectual level, huh? completely on the intellectual level. If you want to re receive it on the experiential level, as I said, bank it on your merit of, that is accumulated through the guru devotion, and therefore where there is guru devotion, there is also the blessing. So that's where it will happen. And that can happen as you pee <laughs> in the public toilet. Even the, that you know, smell of the pee or uh, somebody, smell of uh, somebody burping, disgusting smell. <laughs> it doesn't matter, whatever could trigger something. And through the devotion, and of course, I, know, I don't need to mention, through not making a big deal out of eight worldly dharmas, of course that's, you know, given. And through the devotion and the aspiration to the Mahamudra, it can happen. Just as you zip. <laughs> if it scratches you, at a very sensitive spot. <laughs> and the mixture of that pain and the alertness can all push you to a state where, this is important, this is again coming from the songs, where you will Forget how to be distracted. You understand? You will forget. Like, you will not know how to be distracted. Wow, so scary, that one. That is scary. Especially for someone like me who is like, really, that's so scary. That is really going to cause insomnia because just thought, my goodness that's like on the toe you know like because we love everything we have every gadget we have every application we have is for distraction isn't it <laughs> actually it, you know a little bit, just, this is not even near to the Mahamudra experience, huh? nothing, not even near. But this might help as an example. I went to Amazon, I went to this deep jungle in the Amazon and I somehow agreed to be pa participate this shamanist ayahuasca ceremony. So they gave me things to drink, and I drank quite a lot. Nothing really happened for some time. Then they give me more, and then suddenly when I look up, I saw peacock feathers everywhere on the sky. At night, this is. But the most interesting is, I thought, okay, now I'm going to listen to teachings of Jagjitin Gucheng So, 
my iPod was in front of me, and I totally forgot how to use it. <laughs> totally. It's so easy, isn't it? Just press, but I, how is this, <laughs> you know? And this can be scary. Like not knowing how to go back to... So I think this must be similar, you know, like when you reach to that... Like the, all the old reference, like name, nail polish, bra, zip, Oh, that's kind of, and this thing can happen, even in the toilet, I'm telling you, even as you cook, even as you flip the egg, this can happen, on an experiential level. On the intellectual level, I'm trying to sort of describe it from what my little understanding I have. And I, I'm, I'm doing it more from the negation way. You know, I was saying, usually when we look at this ground luminous emptiness, we always end up getting trapped by attraction to the luminous aspect only or emptiness aspect only. And this is also the birth of duality. And then the whole six round story starts. Everything. Shampoo. <laughs> cologne. So ridiculous. All of this stuff. Traveling on the path Mahamud of luminous insight. So there, for this, there's a result, Lamji Chaja Shadlam. So with the help of gurus, oh, going back to the Milarepa's ghost song, sorry. You know. So this is what Milarepa said to the ghost. You are Nothing but one of those um, drifting to either the luminous, attraction to the luminous or attraction to the emptiness game. It all comes from this ground luminous emptiness and it all dissolves into this. So you cannot disturb me. But when you know that, nothing can disturb you. That song has very important Mahamudra point. And anyway, during the path, through the blessings of the Guru, and through the technique such as reading these songs, and of course, mainly through the supplication to the Guru, And this is, while I remember, I want to tell you this. Because um, there are so many uh, of you, Trungpa uh, Rinpoche, and uh, his, my, Trungpa Rinpoche's student who belongs to his mandala, still very connected to Rinpoche. Um, Because Trungpa Rinpoche, the phenomena called Trungpa Rinpoche is another manifestation of this ground luminous emptiness. Therefore, 
even though in our deluded mind, that limited phenomena called a physical form, has manifested as being gone. If you can understand and trust the ground luminosity and emptiness, if you keep on doing the supplication and prayer, the experience of the Mahamudra, as Telopa said, is not distant. It's here and now. And you have to trust that one. There's no reason not to trust. And you have nothing to lose. Everything what you do, a lot of things to lose. Except this one. You will, the follower of this tradition and the lineage, you must bank onto this one. Anyway, with the help of the readings like this song, a supplication, what we then do is we try to not get carried away by luminosity singly and the emptiness singly and try to remain that ordinary mind intact through the technique given by the Guru. And what will that do? It will worn out all the hinges, railings, benches, references, and be free from pain and anxiety of trying to have a strong grip on railings and hinges. Not only yourself, but all sentient beings. And this is arrival back to the ground luminosity and emptiness, which is termed by Gurgubas as in the fruition Mahamudra of luminous bliss. Bliss, because it has no more pain and anxiety created by references. Now, if for some of those who are very new into this, uh, if you find this completely kind of um, confusing and all that, um, do you want to ask maybe one or two questions? Maybe. I don't talk about the Mahamudra so much, as you may know, but I don't know, somehow. You know, um, in order to motivate ourselves, I thought we need to dis we need to discuss about what is there in, uh, you know, for in this, you know, for us. Profit is di Im always important to discuss before you do the business, isn't it? <laughs> and you might want to know why, what is the profit? What is in it for us going through all this Takbukaji path? And this is, this is, um,
There's no better prophet than this. It is win-win situation. Okay? Okay. Um, I'm relatively new to this, so please forgive me if my question reveals a lot of lack of understanding. Um, I think I appreciate what you are saying about the point of meditation and following the path, the essential point, isn't to jump through the hoops, but that the most central part is to um, develop devotion to the guru. And I grew up in the Catholic tradition, and of course, devotion to that guru is also an important part of the tradition, but in that sense, uh, there's a lot of talk of grace, and I'm assuming that in Buddhism, the devotion to the guru does not involve grace. And so I'm left with the question, what happens as a result of your devotion to the guru that leads you to a greater enlightenment without the concept of mm. grace? Very good. This is why, actually, my explanation on that shaloka was really not enough. We really, in order to do this, we need to talk about a view, meditation, and action. We can. In Buddhism, view is so important. View. And guru, guru devotion, blessing, all this is kind of a meditation. It's like a technique. The view in Buddha Dharma, in general, is the view of non-duality. This has to be the ground. This is why I was talking about getting carried away by luminosity and getting carried away by emptiness. When, we, when, when that happens, we forget the non-duality. So going back to the guru devotion also, nowhere in the Vajrayana, you will find a Guru Yoga that does not end or conclude by uniting the Guru and oneself. Guru never stays as that higher being out there. Neither does one remain here as a lower recipient, uh, impure practitioner. At the end, this, the guru, the giver of the bestower of the blessing, and the practitioner, the receiver of the blessing, must be uh, realized as one. But even one, and we are not even talking about, like, um, when we talk about uniting the guru and the, um, student, uh, practitioner, we are not even talking in terms of like, um, like um, channeling the guru, because that is still a duality, two separate and, you know, being. On the ground level, they have never been separated. Yes, the, prin the guru principle is quite uh, vast and infinite. So, uh, a little bit of, uh, we need to, you know, the study of Guru is very big. Um, and, um, but, um, how should I put it? Maybe this might help. Um, this is from the another lineage, by the way, Sakyapas. Tambulama Sanjin is gum, Bardulama Sanjin is tongue, Tamajan, some Sanjin is suit of Balding Dojiti, which is in. First, you must try to 
try to meditate Guru as the Buddha. Gradually, you must try to see him as the, see him, not just meditate, see him as the Buddha. Lastly, you must come to the conclusion that you are Buddha. That is the quintessence of the Tantriyama. So you can see the Guru is used as a tool to understand the innate Buddha. That, has, that is must. Otherwise, there is a danger when we talk about grace and blessing and all that from an external Guru, then that is not at all in accordance with the, the Buddhist view of non-duality. Okay? Thank you very much. Vijay, um, I'm not very big. Um, it's good to see you again. Um, several times you used the term causal teachings, especially last night, but once or twice today. I've never um, heard that before. Which? Causal teachings. Causal teachings. I don't know what it means. Oh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a kind of a very polite term referring to um, you know, general teachings such as uh, Sharvakayana teachings and Mahayana teachings. Where there's a cause and there's an effect? Is that yes. What? Okay. Buddhist, you know, generally um, the Buddhists are proud of talking about cause and effect mm -hmm. because it also sins. And especially these days, many Buddhists try to sort of wag their tails, is it? <laughs> In front of a scientist. <laughs> you understand? So, in that regard, Buddhists love talking about cause and condition and effect. Mm -hmm. But when you go a little bit deeper, like a tantrayana, then the logic of cause and condition and effect, well, for now, we, I will say, we have to have the courage to go beyond that a little bit. At the risk of not sounding like you know, Advaita, Vedanta, and etc., etc. I'm only throwing this out just for you to be curious. Okay. Okay. I have confessed that I'm rather attached to cause and effect, but um, I won't say you are? anymore. Yes, you are because I oh, yeah, can yeah, understand yeah. it. Very good, very good. <laughs> but that's okay. Keep it this. Very good. Okay. Very Thank good. you. Very good. Yes, yes. You must. You must, as Telopa said yesterday, you know, to extract the oil from the sesame seed, you need to have cause and condition. Of course, by all means, you must. But, <laughs> but, but because we are doing this, because we are doing this, it is also important for me, it is my duty to tell you that uh, we should be um, we should be ready to give up that. That's why. Uh, okay, Sarah. So I think there was three things you said earlier that that really struck me and. Um, First, just the thing about obstacles and that obstacles come up and that that's part of the path. Um, and the second uh, was about the kind of fashion. Um, I think you talked about mindfulness or um, the kind of, I don't know, stripping away or mainstreaming or fashionableness of practice. And then it was the, the idea of taking a bird's eye view, like looking at the, 
the Karmapa lineage from a big picture or looking at the Dharma from a big picture. Um, and for, I don't know, right now emotionally I have this perception that like lines from the Sadhana Mahamudra often just spontaneously arise in my mind and I feel like very sad that I have some qual feeling, like particularly in the last few years, that like our distraction, our speed, our sense of having no time, it's like the dark age is getting thicker um, and that Dharma feels harder or more threatened or something. Um, and I just would love it if you would say a little bit more about uh, your perspective on that or what you see or um, not sort of, yeah, just what how, how we could view the big picture of the Dharma in the world right now. Actually, I'm you know, even though I'm very pessimistic usually, I'm really pessimistic about the ecology, pessimistic about, you know, things like that. But I have to, you know, don't get, uh, don't, uh, you know, like swell your head too much. I have, you know, throughout, you know, I'm very encouraged and, uh, what do you call it, um, optimistic. Uh, probably you need a reminder to pray to the, of course, for those of you who are student of uh, directly or indirectly the student of Trungpa Rinpoche and the forefathers. Um, the fact that it is still going on alone proves that indisputable and uh, non sort of uh, what do you call it um, non deceiving blessing of the guru it's happening it's, i think it's very encouraging actually but just needs a little bit of encouragement from maybe few people here and there and among yourself also and make a bit, bit of a hoo ha sometimes <laughs> that's all you need i think I think actually it's doing quite well. From the blood, big picture's point of view, I'm, you know, I'm talking about. What if you made it just a little smaller? <laughs> oh, well, I will, you know, we can always open like our complaint books and... Thank you, Rinpoche. This is important, you know, this is why I'm very encouraged because, you know, I was talking about, you know, you guys seek. I don't know whether this means anything to you, but it really means a lot for me. Like, I never seeked for Buddha Dharma. I just happened to be there. So, so really, it's quite, wow, you have searched. You have many choices. You have searched, and still you are here, <laughs> still co continuing. And there has been a lot of bumpy roads, and still you are here. That's encouraging. That has to be. That has to be already pre-planned during the moment that when the moment of the shoe hit on Narupa's head. I'm serious. That, that's already... And you know, you can, you know all that, you know, there's just so many, the, the dream, the four pillars, and the, the animals. And when Marpa beat the big cauldron, uh, when Milarepa brought the cauldron and Marpa beat that big cauldron and made a big sound and Marpa said, oh, you know, our, our dharma will be heard far and distant. And the elephant is quite far <laughs> and distant. Okay.
Uh, thank you, Rinpoche, for returning to Halifax. I um, was very curious uh, what you were saying about Vipassana can bring de uh, depression. Because um, I had this. No, I was exaggerating a little bit. Oh, no, darn, don't say that, because I had this conversation on Thursday about that. I had this incredible <laughs> opportunity to have the space and time to do a lot of practice, and I don't want to waste it. In the last year and a half, I've been doing a lot of intense practice. But what I noticed this time round, so I do intense practice every weekend would be a mm -hmm. retreat. And this would go on for about three months. And then I, I would always like to say I'd get whacked. <laughs> and I'd get this depression for about two weeks. Yeah, yeah. And then when I came out of, come out of the depression, I always felt different, lighter, changed, mm -hmm. cleansed. It's how I like to, I feel clean. And um, then I would continue practice and then get whacked again. But the uh, period would be shorter. And I just went through that last uh, weekend with another intense weekend. And Sunday I got mm -hmm. whacked. And I thought, well, there seems to be a pattern here. So for me, it was very interesting to hear you say this. So my question is, is as one continues, if the merit mm -hmm. to be able to continue with the practice, because it is a practice given to me by my teacher and I want to complete it. Mm -hmm. Does that depression, does it sort of shift, change, become not quite as intense? Or I, I, on one level, I'm not really concerned because I can see it's a pattern. On another level, when I'm in that depressive state, I don't feel, it feels like not all of me is in that. I can see actually what is going on so I don't feel this real concern, I know it will shift and I'll come out of it. Um, so I guess I'm just sort of curious. I don't want to wait to find out what happens. <laughs> you know? But I'm just sort of curious because that was a really interesting, I uh, look at it as a guidepost. Uh, when yes. you meant, uh, a guidepost mm -hmm. along, the, uh, along the path that this is not unusual. It's something that you can experience, may experience, and it's no big deal. And that's how I've been looking at it, and I just want to make sure that that attitude is the correct attitude. <laughs> Let me think about it. Okay. I'll go to my seat. <laughs> no, I'm no. Gonna, yeah, let me think about it, and uh, we will talk about it in the afternoon. Sure. Hello, Rinpoche. I have a question about um, Tamagi Shepa and Mahamudra. And... Some of it has to do with the term ordinary mind. And when we're trying to be ordinary, sometimes the ordinariness becomes like, that's what everybody else does. That's fair. That's what everybody else does. If we think if we're ordinary, mm. we're, and we're like everybody else, that's ordinary. And I had a feeling that's not quite the understanding of ordinary mind, because if I look at you. My feeling is you are a manifestation of Mahamudra and you are a manifestation of Tamagi Shepa. And when you talk, it's very ordinary, but it's also very shocking, very surprising. Nobody knows where you're going. So I thought those might also be qualities. Those those, all, I thought those qualities of shocking, surprising, and ordinary unpredictable, mm -hmm. might also be the qualities that you're manifesting and might also be the qualities of Mahamudra and Tamagi Shepa. It, would I be somewhat on the right track with that? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I would only parrot again what I think Lama Shang Rinpoche said. Um, actually, the ordinary mind, uh, ordinary mind of an ordinary person and the ordinary mind of a um, sublime being such as a Naropa, no difference at all. 
The only difference between Naropa and ordinary people like us is whether we are being able to take advantage of it or not. Could you say... <laughs> take, adv take advantage. Uh, take advantage. Manifest. Yes. Wow. What could I say? When many things... When we need to apologize somebody, it indicates that we are not being able to take advantage of the ordinary mind. Does it make sense? I'm sorry? No. <laughs> when we need to apolo when we feel that we are obliged to apologize. Yes, I think I know, but could you say just a little bit more? When we feel mm -hmm. or we or we are obliged to apologize or say good morning, how are you? Or straighten your tie or put a cologne. And of course, mm -hmm. not as a manifestation of compassion. But as habit. As a habit. Then we are not being able to take advantage of the ordinary mind. The ordinary mm -hmm. mind has been soaked into disgusting stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. And now it has become special. And that special mind is going to lure you, I think. Can we, I, we can discuss mm -hmm. this a little bit more after lunch, maybe. Okay. Th okay. Thank you, Rinpoche.